testing, testing. One, two, three. Are we good? Good morning, World Outreach Revival Center. Come on, let's give Jesus a shout of praise if we can. It's good to have you with us that are here. Uh, those that are on their way, we have an anticipation for something good today. Amen. If you notice, there's a little difference on the back set of the platform. That's not completed. It's not completed. We're planning uh, some different types of lights. But we, we Sister Tamara and I have been searching for about three months trying to find some inexpensive back sets. I was not putting wood pallets on our walls like everybody else. I just could not do the wood pallet thing. I'm too, too much involved in that. And so for uh, $100, that's what we get. And uh, we found a church that had um, a back set with it, and they have beautiful lights going up. We're using our existing lights just to get an idea to feel. But I think it's going to be beautiful when it's done. So uh, we're just trying to make a few changes around here that will be more youthful and adultful. That's even a word. So we're going to combine the youth. Because I know if you come in here on Tuesday night, there's no lights on. It's pitch black in here except for this, this platform. And they have the backlights on. Well, now they just give them a little more bulk, I think. But uh, God is good. And uh, I'm excited today that you're here and those that are on their way. And the great goodness of our God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we invite you to move today by your spirit. We invite you, God, to uh, just have your way. Lord, let us have that spirit of unity that bond of peace. Let us come, O oh God, before you very throne and let you have your way. Lord, we're believing for devils to be cast out, for the sick to be healed, for souls to be saved. And Lord, if you see it, the dead to be raised. God, we're believing for signs and wonders and miracles. So God, we praise you. Lord, we believe for a youth ministry, oh God, that will shake this city. Come on, church. Yes. That will shake this city, God. Young people that are not afraid to share your word or to spread your gospel. Adults that will spread your word, Father, wherever they're at, God. Yes. Jesus, we come before you. And we are desperate. For your presence, for your flow. Lord, I pray that Caleb will get drunk today. I pray, God, that he will literally fall out up there. That he won't be able to play the keys and someone will have to rescue him. I pray, God, that every singer up there will be intoxicated with your presence, God. And Lord, that the church will be hit with the power of your glory. Father, we want more of you. Is anybody in agreement with me? Yes. If you are, come on. Just If you're sitting, and my eyes are close, stand on your feet. If you're at home, come on. Just begin to invite him. God, we need. We need the more. Lord, it's not that we're not satisfied with our salvation. It's not that we're not happy about what you've done. But God, we need the more. Lord, the more that will change more lives, God. That will empower people. That will transform people. My God, we commit it all to you. Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My God, my God, my God. Everybody in the house, close your eyes, please. Everybody in the house, close your eyes. I want you to begin to pray out loud if you would. You don't have to be super loud, but everybody in the house, begin to pray right now. Let's make our requests be known. Everybody in this house. Did we come here today out of obligation? Did we come here because this is our church? Did we come here because you're like me or like the music? Those are the wrong reasons. We come here because we've been sent by God. And we come here with the purpose of saying, God, here I am. Do you want to use me today? Do you want to fill me today? Come on, church. Father, we pray for the young ones. That you will minister to them. And minister through them. We pray for the olders. Ones, oh God, that you will minister through us, oh God, that you will flow like a river. 
My God, my God, my God, my God. If you pray in tongues, I'm going to ask you to pray quietly right now before the Lord. Jesus, we are crying out to you, Lord, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Kid, if I need you to give me something on there that's got some oomph to it, Eli, can you hear me back there? Give me some drums, come on. Just give us a little build up of sound. We can either go real slow or we can believe God's a God of miracles. How many in here could use a touch from God? Raise your hand. Anybody at all? Okay? If you want a touch from God, then let's just get there. Come on. Come on. Come on. We can, we can just do it like a social club and, and, uh, and nothing's going to happen. Or we can say, God, here we are. We need transformation. We need something to go on in our lives, God, beyond where we're at. Father, we want to have an encounter with you. Come on, anybody with me? My God, right now, right now, Lord, we believe for the encounter of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, come. Come and have your way. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ooh. Come on, Eli, just go. Just hammer on him and go. I don't care where you go. Just go. Pray prophetically, Eli, over the, the airwaves right now. Come on. Take every... Can you hear me up there? Can you hear me? You can't hear me. Okay. See, we're going to get me in his monitor somehow. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just put your focus on him. Put your focus on him. My God, my God, my God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on. Every stronghold, Caleb, we want to bring it down. You guys begin to begin to worship just in the sound, but begin to pull down the strongholds right now. Come on, church. Tell every stronghold it's got to go. Come on. Come on. Well, we tear down every barrier. We tear down every religious thing. We tear down every wall. Father God, we come against every principality. We come against every power. We come against every ruler of darkness in high places. My God, we make a sound before you, God. A sound that will crush darkness. A sound that will break the forces of hell. A sound that will bring revival. Come on, does anybody believe God still wants revival? If you do, come on. Come on. My God, my God. Lord, we're not just starting an engine. God, we're taking off today with faith believing that mountains will move, that strongholds will be crushed, that the fire of God will fall, that the power of God will manifest itself. Oh, come on. Come on. Jesus, 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 Jesus. My God, our world needs more than what the church is walking in. Our governments need more than what the church is walking in. God, let us rise up. Father God, let us rise up to a higher place of praise, to a higher place of your anointing. Holy Spirit, break through in the homes right now. Holy Spirit, break through in the house right now. Streets, oh God. Lord, I pray for Christian life, assembly of God. I pray for life, church, resurrection life, oh God, Christian embassy, Lord Rosa Park, First Baptist Lord, and all the other churches in this area. We hold them up, God. We hold them up, God. We hold them up. Break through, God. We souls set the captives free. Lord God, we hold them up today. Not by my door, by Power, but by your spirit, oh God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Now I'm going to ask you for the next 30 seconds. I want you to whistle, bang on something, clap your hands. If you want to shout, shout. But for 30 seconds, let's just give him the loudest praise we can. Come on. 30 seconds. Come on, go.
So I'm going to ask those that would, if you can, to stand. If, you, if you're unable to stand, it's all right. You know, there's physical things. We're going to honor him this morning. You know, there's something about the altar. It's okay to sit in the seats. It's okay to sit in the back. It's okay to sit in the front. But there's something about the altar area that creates an atmosphere of anointing. Pastor Marcus, all these years, he moves back there, but he moves really strongly in this atmosphere. I don't know why, but sometimes you got to get out of your seat where you're at. Just come and get where nobody's in front of you, and you're just right there in that place. Of course, just you, the worshipers, and God. I promise you, there will be some breakthroughs in your life today. Father, right now, as some come, some stay, doesn't matter to me, God. Lord, we come before you to worship you. I I'm going to say this. I literally feel the enemy doing everything he can to block the presence of God this morning. That's what I feel. I don't know what you feel, but I feel like he's doing whatever he can to just block the, the Spirit of God from having liberty in the house. And so we're going to worship. We're going to love on him 
for a minute. This is all about him. If you're a leader in the house and the Spirit of God compels you strongly to pray for somebody, sanitize yourself and lay hands on them. Ask them if it's all right. But let's just press in for a few minutes. Lord, because you are the most important one in our lives, God. There is nobody like you. So, Father, as we sing this to you, we ask you just to visit your people this morning. Come on, Caleb, sing it before the Lord. Jesus. 
we have to do something a little bit different. Get our focus completely on Him. Father, right now, would all, whatever you've done at this altar area today, secure it, seal it with your precious Holy Spirit. For we honor you. Shauna's mama, can I pray for you? Come on, come up here. Susan, can you come down here and just stand behind her, please? Just stand over here. I just want to anoint you. Is that all right? Stand right here. Church, pray for her if you would. Stretch your hands towards Monique right now. Monique, the anointing of God right now is sitting on you. He's coming right now. He's coming right now. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, he's coming right now. The blanket of his presence will descend upon you. The Lord says to tell you, daughter, I have plans for you. I'm not done with you. I have plans for you, says the Lord. And he says, and it won't be, it doesn't need to be in your own strength. It'll be in my strength, says the Lord. 
You don't have to worry about how strong you are. You rest in me, the Lord says. All he's looking for is surrender and brokenness. So from the crown of your head, just raise your hands before the Lord. Close your eyes and just start receiving. Father, right now, I anoint you with oil. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I command every assignment to stop that is not of God. I cut off every assignment of hell right now. That which would try to destroy you, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I send you back to the very pits of hell, you destroy her. Take your hand from her. I bind you up in the name of Jesus. And I declare the power of the Holy Ghost to rest over you. And that the battles will weaken because the Spirit of God will be your strength and your armor and your light. The Lord says, daughter, I love you. I have not turned my heart from you nor my eyes from you, says the Lord. I have a purpose for you. You are no accident. You are not just a thing here, but you are mine. And I have marked you with my royalty, says the Lord. And I put my hand upon you. And I have called you by name, says the Lord. I know you. And I love you, says the Lord. So today, he cancels the assignments of hell. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I break it off. I break it off. I break it off. Shh. Call upon him right now. Let me just call upon him. Ask Jesus. Say, I receive it. Just tell him. Right now, by faith, it's your faith that reaches to the heavens. It's your faith that says, God, I believe you will do it for me right now. My God, I break off every assignment right now. Devil, from this moment forward, your hands have been removed and your assignments canceled by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of his name. Right now. Right now. Holy Spirit descend upon her. Lord, your word cannot return void. What you said you would do, you will do. So fill her to overflowing with your presence, God. Fill her to overflowing with your anointing, God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Burn through this vessel with your healing virtue. Her mind, her body, her soul, her spirit. Lord, I declare you were wounded for her transgressions. You were bruised for her iniquity. The punishment for her peace was on you. And by your stripes, she is made whole. Right now. Just for one more minute, church, pray. Come on. Lift her up. She is, she is special to the Father right now. She is special to the Father. You are no orphan. I speak healing in the inner parts of God. In the inner man right now. Not by might, not by power, God, but it's by your spirit. Oh, who the Son sets free is free indeed. We break it off. We break it off. Every assignment. Lord, I ask you to send angels beside her now. Even this day when she leaves, that angels will be with her, God. That your spirit will be around her, convicting her of God. That you will be the driving and the guiding force. For her future. Yes. Lord, we crush the head of the serpent. We say you are under our feet. Yes. And we declare the word of the Lord to be the strength that she needs. From this day forward, God, I declare your word over her. From this moment forward, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
He said in his word, all that call upon me will be saved. You are called to his presence. My God, I rebuke everything that would bring confusion. I command all confusion to leave her. And I speak clarity of the truth of your spirit and your word in Jesus' name. You received that this morning. Do me a favor. I want you to stomp your foot and say, Devil, you're under my feet. Come on, do it again. Do it again. One more time. Say this with me. Jesus, you've got me. I'm not doing this on my own. Never again. You will guide me. You will strengthen me. Devil, you're under my feet. By the blood of Jesus Christ. I am free. And I walk with Jesus. Your assignments will fall by the wayside. Your strength will not stand against his strength. I am God's daughter. I have a purpose. In Jesus' name. I have a purpose. Show her purpose in life, God. In Jesus. Let the anointing rest on her, Father, when she leaves this place today, God. Let her just fill it from the crown of her head, Lord, like a tingling of your presence, God. No more to be the same, God. Not ever again. Enough is enough. crazy about the palette thing. We've seen that around a minute. But this is cool. This looks, looks good. And I, and I took a minute and looked at it online and it really looks sharp on there. So little things to make things better. Uh, we're, we're wanting to enhance a lot of our online presence uh, considering that, that seems to be where a lot of people are lately in this season. So so we want to make that better sound and all those things and lighting and all that. We're just we're going to do it. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, Another thing I'm really excited about is this coming weekend. Uh, we're going to uh, Winter BBF next week, so yeah, excited about that. So we leave on Friday. Uh, we will have uh, service that night, of course, a couple of them on Saturday, and uh, we'll leave Sunday morning and be back here for church service. So I encourage you, uh, come next week. Uh, if you'd like to go to the conference, uh, come see me. Uh, you can travel with us. You can come on your own, however you want to do it. This year, we're kind of being a little more loose on personal vehicles because of circumstances. But uh, please come see me. Let me know uh, if you want to be in the head count for us, our food preparations and things of that nature. So, uh, at hotel rooms, I have uh, I have I've almost got all the rooms full right now. It's it's amazing. We have uh, 50 plus, I think, at this point. I'm going to say plus because I just got a call last night. A couple more people want to be added to the list. So uh, I think every time I talk with Karen, there's more bodies being added. So fortunately, she always prepares that. Uh, for more. So if you'd like to go, it's $65 a person. That's food, hotel, travel, everything. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor or help sponsor someone to go, if you can't go and uh, you'd like to do it, uh, come see me. I do have a couple of teenagers I want to uh, encourage to go, and I think that might be what's holding my back. So uh, just let me know uh, on that. So um, excited. Uh, I, I know it's kind of funny. I come in here today, and uh, my nephew is now famous because of me. I take all the credit for that. 
Yeah, so we went on a little hunting trip, and Lord blessed him. He was able to, to harvest two, and I got nothing once again. So here I am, you know. Yeah, take him, teach him, and now he outdoes me. And I'm like, I'm just going to stay home in the future. Why, I, why do I need to go? He can drive himself down there. So anyway, but it was a blessed trip. And uh, he's actually, I think, traveling now, headed back uh, last I talked to him. So so that was pretty good. But I, I love everybody coming and say, oh, yeah, you're happy. And they want to make fun of me. Yeah, thank you very much. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Just need the Lord's favor. It's only two weeks. Anyway, all right. So back to the topic at hand. Uh, I did see something kind of cool this year, though. I want to share this with you. It's kind of random. But I, it, I'm sitting in my, my, my tree stand about 20 feet in the air. I've got a, a little climber, and I, I'm up there, and I'm just kind of relaxing in the morning. And uh, there's a little tree about, about where the camera is there uh, from me, a little small one, about four inches or so. And, and mind, mind you, I'm up in the air. And all of a sudden, as I'm looking, I see something white falling. And, and, and it's, it's about, I don't know, about an inch and a half long. And it's really like a, almost like a hair, like a fiber or something. Is that, does everybody get a good visual of that? And it's white. So it kind of sticks out. It's, but it's really, and I'm watching it just kind of floating. I said, well, that's strange. It's like a fiber maybe from a tree leaf or something. I'm not really sure what it was, but it's just floating along. And I'm, I'm watching it just kind of go here and all of a sudden, and then the wind kind of blows it. And it's kind of like watching a feather fall, right? Everybody get the idea? And all of a sudden I look and, and it just kind of blows this way. And that tree that's in front of me, like I said, about where that camera is, uh, all of a sudden it blows over and it and it hooks on the smallest little sprig about this long sticking out of that tree that was actually probably as small as this fiber was about that long. And it was just so random. I went, ha! I kind of laughed. And I thought, how weird was that? The one little thing I've never seen before falling, and I'm watching it, and it catches the one little bitty twig about that long sticking out of this tree, and it just hangs there. I thought, I, I, I laughed. I really did. I thought, that's funny. I've never seen anything like that. And I'm watching it. I'm going, you know, I might want to remember this. I'm reaching for my phone. I'm going to take a picture of this random thing on a tree, right? It makes no sense. But I'm watching, of course, and then it kind of slides off and it, it falls down just as I get the camera out. Well, I'll just have to tell people. I got no evidence that it happened. You'll just have to take my word for it. But I looked at it. I just laughed and I said, Lord, you know, he always finds ways to show me things. And uh, I mean, I could tell you other great stories from the weekend. I had a lot of fun. So saw things that I hadn't seen before, but that was one of them. And I thought, you know, I serve a God that knew that was happening. How weird is that and random is that, that he pointed it out to me and I saw it happen and I thought, wow, if that would have happened whether I was there or not, I don't know. Maybe God just did it just to give me something to laugh at while I was in the tree because, you know, I was envious of my nephew. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. But it, but it just, it was one of those weird things. And I just smiled and I said, you know, Lord, you know all the little things that are going on too. It's not just the big things. The little things in life, you have that all in control. And was there any spiritual value in that? No. But I thought it was just kind of a wink from the Lord or, or a smile. Does that make sense? And, and to me, it was just like, oh, okay. And so that being said, a God that has that kind of control and able to do random things like that, I'm in Natchez, Mississippi, on a tree stand 20 feet in the air, and I see this one little thing. i got to be able to trust Him that He's got things in control. Can I get an amen from somebody? If he can pull that off, I'm like, okay, I see what you're saying there, Lord, I see. And so the scripture come to mind and, and this morning as I thought about it, because I'd actually forgotten about that, to be honest with you. I, once I climbed out, I didn't even tell Caden about it when we were back at camp. And the Lord reminded me this morning, and I just have to think that there was a purpose behind it, is to share it with you. And the verse that come to mind, you might think maybe doesn't apply, but it's actually in Malachi, and uh, it's Malachi 3, 8. And I'm just going to paraphrase, it says, says, you've, you've robbed me. And, and, and you say, how do you rob me? And, 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 and he says, and tithe an offering. And I thought, well, Lord, that's kind of, kind of harsh for something so cute, so to speak, that you're showing me. But I think it's the Lord telling us this. Even your pennies, even the small things he cares about, and he has it. Can we trust him? I, I, I've reached a place in my life where I trust him with my money. And, and I'll be honest with you, I like tax season because I usually get a decent refund and I'm able to tithe on that. What? Yeah. And the team and I always look at what our W-2 is and we were prepared to go, did we pay enough throughout the year? 
right? Did we did we do it? We should have. But you, I always like to make sure because I don't want to be the guy robbing God. Amen. So if he can control those little bitty things like that that go on inside of the, the woods, I, I think he can handle my money. I think he can take care of me. Does anybody agree with me on that today? Yeah? So, so maybe that's what it was about. Maybe the Lord was giving me a heads up on some offering speeches. I don't know. Maybe I'm just grasping for straws. But I just thought it was kind of funny. It was kind of fun for me. And so, uh, so I want to challenge you in this season. Let's trust him with it. Let's trust him with it. It might be a small amount. And you might think yours is random and doesn't do anything. But the Lord will take it and do some really cool stuff. Amen? So I think that's all I had on the, uh, yeah. All right. So I want to encourage you now. If you've got something today, tithe and offering, why don't you just get it in your hand. And let's lift it before the King of Kings. Father, we lift these gifts up to you just to say thank you. You provided this, whatever it is, small amount, large amount, nothing at all today. But, Lord, this is, this is an honor of you today. We thank you for this. I ask the Lord, according to your scriptures, if we pay our tithe, you promise to meet our needs. Some in this place have legitimate needs. I pray that, Father, you honor your word. And some today, Lord, God, are giving an offering. Lord, they're planting a seed today. They believe you and they trust you. No matter how small the seed is, that you'll bring the harvest. The Lord, some have an empty hand today and they're just saying, Lord, it's just been one of the weeks. But they have their hand in faith because they want to honor you. They want to trust you. So, Lord, let them see you move this week. Let us not be so busy, Lord, that we can't see the little things that you do and the little smiles that you give us just to remind us that you've not forgotten about us and you can see us even in the middle of the woods somewhere 20 feet in the air on a tree. You are always there. And I thank you, Father. If you believe what you pray today, what you say, amen. amen. The Bible says we're to be cheerful givers. It's now time to give the offering. Y'all gonna have to be a little more cheerful now on that one. That was a little bit. Some of y'all kind of like, oh, okay. Who's happy about giving to God? If you're happy to give to God, let's see. Oh, okay. I agree. Mean, Doesn't all of her look good up there? Come on, give the Lord a hand. Give all of her a hand. Thank you, Brother Ronald and Brother Ushers. Now, you probably noticed that we have put the uh, offering plates on a different location. There's a reason for that. Just to give you, if you want to just be a little more private... We didn't realize that everybody that walks down the center aisle is a star on Facebook and everyone's watched who gives and who doesn't give or what have you. So what we decided, let's just move them a little bit to the sides and, you know, we're making some changes I think that are for the better. So just hang with us. We're also, how many like the little sconce light we have turned on over here? There's only one of those. It's 20 years old. So what we're going to do is take those down and we're going to put four on each side. So that when you come in here, we have a prayer time. We want to turn the lights down. We can turn those on and it'll just give us that right place of privacy instead of having these big giant lights beating down on top of us. So there's a few things we're trying to do that are uh, just going to put us where we need to be. Things we wanted to do for a long time. And I'm so thankful for Sister Tammy uh, working in the office and, and being a tremendous help. Uh, to me and the ministry. Can we give her a big hand? She's really, she's, um, you don't know what all she is really doing. And uh, uh, I just appreciate her very much. Um, 
After service this morning, I know there's not a whole load of people here today, but Sister Bridget is asking that any ladies that could stay and uh, she wants, what, about five minutes, Bridget, something like that, just to communicate on the Sisters in Christ ministry. She's needing a little bit of help, and so she'd like to share with you guys something on that, and uh, we can get back to um, uh, our ministry uh, you know, COVID hit, which we kept going and did, did fine. And then Christmas and Toys for Tots and all that. So uh, her first one this year will be coming up shortly. And uh, she just wants to communicate with you guys on, on some of that. So please remember that. Uh, and also remember the uh, BBF and um, uh, the winner of BBF. And when this is, uh, I don't want to say coincidentally, but this is Marcus's week to preach coming up. So he's going to also come back with a bunch of fired up young people and some adults that are on fire. And uh, so I have an anticipation next Sunday for something great to happen. Amen. Kylie, come up here real quick, please. Kylie, come up here real quick. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, Sage kind of preached last week. He took over. I, that was like, I said, pray. And then did he pray? I thought, man, this guy's going to preach. Our, our, and, you know, here's how this works. The older we get, the younger they get. So, you know, I can call you a baby and you're 20 years old because I'm getting old. So then I suppose, you know, when you're 80, then 40 is still a baby. But anyway, so she's not a baby, but she's a baby to, to, to me. And, Monique, this is, this is why she's up here is because she sees things, sees things in the spirit and so after we pray for you I want her to tell you what she saw okay <laughs> okay um, so when he was praying and everything when it got close to the end I saw this like small fire and it was a whole black room there was no light or anything it was just a small fire and then as he was praying it just got bigger and bigger and then a few seconds after then there's like an opening to the wall and there was it was pitch black and then there was an opening and it was white and then it shined down so kind of lit up a little bit i hope you can receive what she's saying because you know she just is saying and she doesn't know you so this is thank you for your obedience baby <laughs> Come on. Don't ever tell me that God showed you something and uh, and not ever want to stand in front of people because it doesn't matter. Once, once you say, God showed me this, then the option is in me and, and by the Spirit of God, should I take the time for that? And uh, uh, I, I'm, I will say this. Um, it's always the darkest before the breakthrough. Amen. It always is. We are right on the edge. We're right on the edge of a major breakthrough of the Spirit of God. Yes. Now we are. Now I'm not talking about just a few tears at an altar service and a few shakings here and there. I'm talking about the power of God to be manifested. We are. And um, it's, it's there for the willingness to pay the price. It's there for the willingness to step into it and have faith that he will do it. That's what this is really about. Um, God has a lot of work to do. He does. The world that he has created is shot to pieces except for the church of Jesus Christ. And so he has much work to do. And he will do the work by the Spirit in the name of his Son but through you and through me, okay? So from the least to the greatest, I, I love my attitude sometimes because it's filled with sarcasm. It's, it's not a good thing, but it's still who I am, and I can't get away from it. Um, but when people will not do what God has uh, called them to do or will just sit back lazily watching others do all the work, it irritates me. Especially when I know you got the same goods and they're doing all the work. 
And then you walk away and say, well, God doesn't use me. God don't do this because you're lazy. You won't get off it and go do it. Fear is holding you back or whatever the case is. I'm sorry I'm being a little bit of a father today, but I'm just telling you the way it is. Because God, I, I, I heard the Lord say yesterday, there's urgency, there's not much time. People have got to get up and do what I'm calling them to do. And let me just tell you something. If you're carrying a ball and chain, then ask God to let you swing it till you hit the devil in his head and then let that chain go. Are you hearing me? The church has got to rise up. We're right on the edge of a breakthrough of his presence. And we've got to make the decision, God, I'm in all the way and I'm moving forward. And the church has been in a position for, for several uh, years that, please forgive me, but uh, who's the guy that's the, the leader teacher that we followed? And you can go through his 21 laws of leadership. Help me, Marcus. 21 rules of leadership. Man, my brain went blank on him. When you get his name, holler at me. Say John Maxwell. John Maxwell? Thank you, Faye. Faye got it. He, he puts out a, 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 a statistic. Please listen. I feel the anointing on this so strong. He puts out a statistic. And in business it's the same, but he is also a Christian and brings it into the church. He said 20% of every church of the people, 20% do everything. And the rest just sit and enjoy. So if you've got a church of 2,000, 200 do everything, and 1,800 just sit, forgive me, on their backsides and enjoy the work of the 200. And I'm being a little strong this morning because I hear the Spirit of God saying, it's no time to sit anymore. It can't be up to the 20% because God says, I married 100% of my church. I don't just want the 20%. I want all my body to know they have a purpose, they have a call, and that I'm with them, and that I will do great exploits through them. That's what he's saying. And so I believe that there is a prophetic anointing stirring, not just the 20. Do you understand? I've been in this type of move of God. I was telling Sister Tammy, I got, I got, as far as I can remember, I got saved at 11, but I was in church probably at 9 or 8. And I said, that puts me at close to 57 years of being in church. That's a long time. And I wasn't just in some church. I was in the church where the anointing flowed, always. I had a mother that was crazy in love with God and filled with the Spirit of God and only knew faith moves mountains, and that was her ministry. And I was raised up in that. And in all the years, we've seen God do so many things, it's incredible. And in that season of time, I've seen God, hear me out, just move through a small, select group of people in every move. You might have 10, you might have 20, you might have 5, you might have 2, but they're the ones, and it's like they're the conduit for God to pour out on everybody else. But God is saying, I want to use my entire body, not just one or two or three or four. Are you hearing me? I believe God's saying I want to change the statistic from the 20% to the 100%. Let's just flip it around and say 80% move and the other 20% don't. Amen. Forgive me for a minute. Mama Shiki on that. Got to speak in tongues for a minute. I'll never forget when the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to get to the scriptures in a minute. Marcus, uh, the, the youth came back from, from youth camp and God spoke to me and said, I want you to start something called ramp up. And I went to Marcus, we talked about it and we, we, we just knew God was saying ramp up. What is ramp up? We didn't know what ramp up was. Just you know, ramp up. And then he said, ramp up for revival. Ramp up for the services to come. Ramp up for the anointing in our city. 
So we immediately begin to invite youth from everywhere. Remember that, Marcus? We had like 65 youth from all over town, different churches coming in. With, and and the, the prayer that they had started around 7. It was prayer and worship and sometimes started to 11. Now, I'm sorry, but I had heard rumor. I don't know for a fact, but I heard rumor that some of the churches had to have a deacon's meeting to discuss whether they let their kids come and be a part of what we were doing because they didn't want them involved in that type of an atmosphere. Am I telling the truth? They started pulling their kids out because they were afraid they might just get something. The police came and said, look, can you turn it down? I said, I can, but look, you got 50 kids in here worshiping God on a Saturday night. They're not out there doing drugs. Isn't this a good thing? He says, oh, yeah. He says, just turn down a little. <laughs> now, here's what I loved about those meetings. I want to run around this building and shout. I feel like I'm all alone, though. I do. I feel like nobody really feels it. And I'm just like ready to blast off. Ready to be raptured. And I think people are just going to stare at me like, what happened to him? Man, Tammy, I'd be glad when you get up and start prophesying. Jesus. Good God, have mercy. Mm. I feel like my mother's on me right now. My God. <laughs> Start groaning and moaning, make some weird sounds. You know, the spirit of Shirley Meeks is on me. If you're watching, Mom, it's not your spirit, it's the spirit of God. But, um, your blood's in me. Anyway, Marcus, I'm ready to fall out. I'm serious. I can't always stand up up here. I remember when we had the youth doing the ramp up. And we'd always get these kids that came in with an attitude. They invite them in, but and they would just walk in and, and they would sit down and they'd have their arms crossed and they'd have an attitude of, I'm not getting involved in that stuff. Remember? There were so many of them, it was ridiculous. I mean, we didn't, we didn't count them after a while. And I remember one young man, I don't know who he was, but, but I think he got a, like a, 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 an attitude of arrogance. You can get any kind of attitude you want, but when the Holy Ghost comes, your attitude's about shift. And I remember that boy, Marcus, just walking around the building. I don't think you probably remember. He was walking around the building with an attitude. I'm not getting involved in this stuff. Next thing you know, the students, the, the young people, got behind him. Now, I don't know if he initiated the walk or how it was, but I remember they all ended up behind him. And I'm going to tell you, this young man's whole entire demeanor changed. And the peer pressure went from a negative peer pressure to a positive peer pressure because he was being sucked in by the majority into the presence of God. And before the thing was over, the power of God was striking these young people one right after another. And they would come in here with a spirit of depression, maybe a spirit of suicide, maybe a spirit of I'm aggravated, maybe a spirit of I hate you. I don't know what the spirit was, but because of the majority, it's sucked them right in, and they could do nothing except for submit. When you've got 50 kids standing around you in a circle, and they're prophesying over you, and they're laying hands on you, and they won't let up until you get your breakthrough, guess what? You're going to leave changed. Amen. We watched it over and over. Wasn't it embarrassing? Sure it is. <laughs> breakthrough always is. Because you're the spectacle. But you don't care after he gets a hold of you. You got to break through that fear and that timidness and say, here I am, God, I'm all in. Let's do this thing. I don't care what you want to do with me, just do it. I don't care. And I'm just saying this. We live in a world right now that's so rapidly transforming in front of our eyes. The church has to get an I don't care what men think attitude and have an I care what he thinks attitude. Come on. I'm not talking about being obnoxious. I'm talking about following the one that says, I'll guide your footsteps. That's where we've got to lean upon. And the, the ears have got to be focused on him so that we can say, I don't care. It may look weird. Or they may not like me to do it. Or they may not. What, what happens? What are they going to say? What are they going to say? They're going to say a lot. Just do it. Amen. If you know God is in it. Okay. I'm going to try to read a couple of scriptures. My God. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. 
I only wanted one verse out of this, but when I read it, I said, let's read the whole thing. Sorry, I tried not to, but I just couldn't help myself. Ephesians chapter 4, if I can find Ephesians. Tell somebody next to you, you are important. Tell them, say, God needs your gift. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling or the, the vocation wherewith you're called. Walk this Christian walk with lowliness, meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You understand, unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace is one of the most important things. You want to crash a service? You want to crash a ministry? You want to crash your life? Be in discord and not in unity and watch and see. It will block the hand of God. Someone say Amen. There is one body, there is one spirit, even as you are called into one hope of your calling. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. Now, that's the, the thing that says one baptism is not referring to baptism in the Holy Ghost. It's not referring to water baptism. It's meaning there's one baptism in the Christ. Everybody got that? And he's saying the church, the body, is one. But every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherewith he is said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, giving gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same that ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all in all. If you're saying, what in the world are you reading? It means when he was here and he died, he went straight to hell and preached to the spirits that were there and then ascended on high and destroyed that, uh, the ability to hold men captive. Are you with me? Okay. That was fast. I know. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Their job was to perfect the saints. For the work of the ministry. To perfect the saints. To build the people. To stir their lives up. For them to edify the body of Christ. That's their job. Till we all come in the unity of faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. And to a mature man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth. Everyone say from now on are no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speak the truth in love, we may grow up in him in all things which is the head, even Christ. And he's saying it's time for the church to stop this being waving like the wind. Today I'm doing good. Today I'm on fire. Tomorrow I'm depressed. Tomorrow I'm discouraged. He's saying get past that. Well, I believe this today. I don't know if I believe it tomorrow. Read your own Bible. Yes. I mean, we have to come to the position of saying, God, what is it you want to do with me? Salvation, I'll never forget the message Pastor Marcus preached years ago. He said, salvation is not for you basically alone. You didn't get saved just for you. You got saved for a whole lot of other people to get them saved. Are you hearing me? You are uh, born again and given a divine instruction or a purpose or a thing or things God wants you to do. Are you hearing me? I said to the Lord the other day, I said, use me. And I had two separate opportunities where the Spirit of God just brought me in somebody's presence where I could just open my mouth and speak into their life. That's just how it works. And if you say, well, you're a preacher, that's easy. You're way wrong. In school, I was the most afraid to ever speak in front of anyone. Ever. If I had to do a report, I stayed home. I was sick that day. I would not get in front of anyone. For me to walk up to a stranger and just have a conversation with them, for me to go to somebody and say, hey, God just told me to tell you this, it is so far out of my character, it would blow your mind. 
Then you say, well, Pastor Dave, why are you preaching? Because that's so far out of my character, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> this is not who I am or was. Now, I just want to be obedient. Do I love preaching? Absolutely. Will I preach anywhere? Absolutely. I'll preach about anything to anyone. It does not matter to me. Because he's the one that ignited the fire in me. It wasn't Dave Meeks. I mean, if I always wanted to, to lead people, one prophet said, you've always led people and they followed you, but God's going to do it his way. And I'm thinking, you lost your marbles, buddy. I never led anybody. <laughs> Nobody would follow me. I was the last guy. They didn't want to even hear from me. That's who I was. But one day, God says, I'm going to turn you completely around and make you opposite of what people see right now. Would anybody like to be turned around a little different than you are? That's how our God works. Thank you for that one amen. I appreciate that. Here we go. That we henceforth, my God, are no more children. Saints, where are you at? Man, stay in the Word. Keep praying. Because you're not being pushed around by anybody else's doctrine. You're not being pushed around by this thought or that thought. You're stabilizing yourself. I knew you'd do good, Oliver, too. And so you rest. All of you guys are. Right? But stay in it. You see, when you begin to put yourself in that foundation, not only the Word, but in prayer, and prayer in the Word, and the Word in prayer, and prayer in the Word. When you do that, you will be stable, so stable, that when the wind blows, it will not take over. And if it seems to bend you a little bit, you just grab a hold of the cross and stand back up and say, I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. The wind can blow. The storm can rage. The fire can come. The flood can rage. But I shall not be moved. Are there any of those kind of Christians in the house today? Brother David, I don't know if I'm that way. You have an attitude. Some of you got a bad attitude. Some of you are stubborn and bullheaded. No one can tell you not to do this because you're going to do it anyway. Come on. I mean, they plead with you. No, I'm going to do it my way. It's just the way it is. Okay, good. How about take that which looks like a weakness and make it your strength in God and say, I'm so bullheaded for the Lord, nothing's going to change me. How about flip it on the devil's head and say, I'm after my God and I'm going running hard and I'm not going to slow down. Does anybody hear you? Amen. Take that which seems like a personality weakness and turn it around and become your spiritual strength in God. So those people that don't get pushed around and deceived by the enemy and flipped over on their head, they speak the truth in love. And they'll grow up in him, which is the head is the Christ. All that, I read that because I just wanted to get 16. From whom, listen closely please, the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body and the edifying of itself in love. Now you might say, Brother David, what did you just read? Let's pretend for a minute. I'm going to make this real elementary. I am the church of Jesus Christ. Me. Just, I know I'm not, but for now, pretend. I am, head to toe, the body of Christ. For some reason, at, I'm not 62, but I'm aiming there. I'm noticing a lot of joints in my body really hurt me now. They never did before. I mean, I, I walk in the church, and I'm going to go up the steps to the back or through the door. And I say, hmm, let's go through the door instead of the steps. I get down and kneel down and pray. I can't feel my feet anymore. They're completely numb. I have to slide and crawl over to the chair to pull myself up on my knees and we're not going to bend, right? The middle of the night, I have throbbing in both of my knees. Don't know why. I never injured those jokers. What's going on? My hips are hurting me. My shoulder hurts me. My head hurts me. My neck hurts me. This is just today. 
And I'm realizing the joints in my body are not real friendly right now. I mean, I turned my head, told my head, and my neck went out. I said, oh my gosh, I'm in the shower trying to twist my head sideways to get rid of this pain. Some of you young ones have no clue. Some of you older ones have no clue. Exactly what I'm talking about. I want you to know something. When your joints are messed up, your body can't function the way it's called to function. And I just read you a scripture that says God made you one of the joints in his body. Did you hear me? Let me read it again. Look, I had something down here. I just wrote it in a politically correct manner. From whom the whole body, when God is there and love is there, the whole body is fitly joined together. Say that, fitly joined. Fitly. Now listen, and it's compacted by that which every joint supplies. You understand, this left knee bothers me. I can push right here and it hurts horrible. I don't know why. But I know it's got to do with where the two joints come together. Are you understanding? When we are not doing our part as a supply in the body of Christ, the body then is hindered, it's disabled, it's not whole. And God is saying to the church, I want you to get into your position and do what I've called you to do and be what I've called you to be so that my body can get out of the wheelchair that has been living here for the last 20 years and rise up in authority and heal the sin, cast out devils, raise the dead, save the soul, do the work of the kingdom. Yeah. Hope you hear me. Read it again. Some other versions are probably better. From whom the whole body is fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making increase of the body to the edifying of itself in love. Are you hearing me? Yes. 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and in holiness. Wherefore, put away, put away lying. And speak the truth to his neighbor. For we are all members of one another. Stop lying to each other. Be angry. And sin not. In other words, be angry at the right stuff. Let not the sun go down in your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Don't give him any place. Let him that steals or stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the things which uh, are good that he may have to give to them that need. Let no corrupt communication, listen closely, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good Amen. to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. When's the last time you said something and did not minister grace to the people that heard it? Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. Let all, everyone say all. Bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and all malice. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you, my Lord. You understand in reading that it says, God, we got a lot that's going on in our lives that we got to lay down. And he will empower you to do it. What is all this about, Brother David? I said this word to a couple people this morning, but it's about you having a divine reason for being a Christian. And it's not just to get to heaven and stay out of hell. It's not. Right. It's a divine reason. And I'm going to pick on Marcus just for a moment, just because he's uh, one of the pastors in the house. And I said this the other day. But he thinks that he was following a young little blonde headed girl into a church. When he was very young, I think that's the way the story goes. And it wasn't my daughter. And he thinks he came into the church for that purpose. And shortly thereafter, God got a hold of him. God connected him with my older daughter. God saved him. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. 
And then God said, now I'm going to call you into the youth ministry. And here we are all these years later. And literally thousands of young people who are now adults. And thousands of teenagers. And thousands of children who grew up through the ranks. Have come to find their faith and serve the Lord. Because he became what God wanted him to become. And it's not just about him or me. It's about every person has a part. I think it was Scanlon Sims that prayed with you, Marcus. Am I right? That gave his life to the Lord. Scanlon's not here. He didn't go to our church. But he was a man that was here for that season, for that moment, so that he could minister to a young man, so that he could ignite a fire in him that he would become, in the future, not even knowing it, a youth pastor for over 20 years in a community to touch young people everywhere. What's going on? God says, I'm the one that will put you in the position for you are the joint of that leg or the joint of that arm or that neck. You're that body part in my kingdom that makes my body whole that lives can be changed. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil likes cripples. Don't take that wrong. I'm talking spiritually. The devil loves us to be crippled and not whole. And it's time you look in the mirror and say, you know what? I've wasted some time, and I'm done wasting it. God, use me. Here's my hands, my feet, my mouth, my body, my legs. Do whatever you want to do, but make me fulfill my part of carrying that body where it needs to go. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. One more scripture. I'm going to wrap it up. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 11. But all these work that one and the self same spirit divide to every man severally as he will. Listen closely. For as the body is one and has many members, all the members of that one body being many are one in Christ. For by one spirit you are all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Gentile, whether bond or free. And have been all made to drink of one spirit, the Holy Ghost. For the body is not one member, but many. Listen closely. I'm going to wrap it up in the next section here. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not part of the body. Is it really not part of the body? And if the ear shall say, well, I'm not the eye. I'm not part of the body. Is it not part of the body? Or if a mouth shall say, well, I'm not on the platform, so I'm really not doing anything. It's your own fault. You may not need to be on the platform. Just do what you're called to do while you're here. Are you hearing me? You walk in not with the mindset just to receive, but walk in the mindset and say, God, what do you want to do? And it may just be that you walk over to somebody and shake their hand and say, I just want to say, I'm really blessed to watch you worship the Lord. Maybe that's all it is. You don't know what they're going through. Do you understand? We're all a part of each other. Your part is vital to the kingdom and to our house. If this is the house God placed you in, guess what? Your part is vital to the house. I've been in this a long time. There's a few times we got out of the wheelchair and we were running. We were sprinters. There's a few times we started dragging our legs. Got back in the wheelchair. Because the body did not do what it was called to do. Are you hearing me? I know this is a little correct, but I'm trying to make it light. If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, am I not part of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body was an eye, if the whole body's an eye, how's it going to hear? And if the whole is an ear, how's it going to smell? But now has the Lord, everyone say the Lord, Set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleases Him. I mean, I'm standing up here. The Lord says to pray. I just didn't randomly say to pray for Monique. It wasn't just, okay, let's do this thing. I was hearing the Holy Spirit. And then He says, I'm going to tell a young girl. I'm going to show her in the Spirit what I did. That's how it works. That was a confirmation that I did what I was supposed to do. And maybe a confirmation to Monique that, hey, God really did this. Because 
some little girl that has no idea who I am just told me what God was showing her. Do you understand? We're all a part of the body of Christ. He supplies the joints, the tendons, the muscle. Just say, I'm willing, God. Here I am. Use me. That's all. But now has God set them in the members, every one that pleased him. And if they were all one member, then where's the body? But now are we many members, yet one body. I'm talking about the body of Christ worldwide and the body of Christ right here. We are all a part of his plan, his purpose. You might say, well, it ends right there. You know, thank God for Pastor Marcus. You know, he ministered. He might retire someday. And, you know, he ministered to the youth. Oh, that was a good season. No. What if one of those youth is the next president of the United States? What if one of those youth is the next Billy Graham or the next prophet Elijah? Do you understand? He wouldn't know. All his job was be in the position you're called to be in. Are you hearing me? That's all we're called to do is say, God, put me in that place and I'll just do what you call me to do. You can't look in the mirror and say, I don't feel a part of the body. I don't feel important. I've got no significance because that's totally unscriptural. And if you're believing that, you're believing the devil more than you believe in the word of God. So don't get mad at Eve. The devil's cunning. And he'll speak to us and say, you don't have no part there. You don't have no part here. You don't have no part there. What can you do? You're a wreck. You've destroyed your life. What can you do? you got this issue, that issue. You can do a lot because God's the one that says, I'll put you in there as I see fit. Is anybody with me? It's quiet in this house. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. Verse 21. I love how he reversed this. You see, it starts out with those not feeling worthy and goes to those who think they're all that. Let me repeat it. It starts out with those who think they're not worthy to be a part, effective in the body, and it ends with those that think they are all that. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Did you hear me? Nor can the head say to the feet, I don't need you. No, much more. Those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And it's speaking about the physical body. There are certain parts of your body that you protect completely because they're vulnerable. And God is saying every human being, every one of us, has been placed in his body. If you receive Christ, it's not by accident. Listen, you can't even get saved unless he calls you. You can't just randomly make the decision, well, I think I'm going to get saved now. If you say, I think I'm going to get saved now, it's because he's the one that's provoking you, drawing you, pulling you to be born again. Why? Because he has a plan for your life. You're not just, well, I'm going to stay a Christian and try to survive. That is not your purpose. And you'll never be satisfied in that mindset. But when you say, God, here I am. I want to fulfill my part in your body. Then you make the body whole. I hope you're getting this this morning. The world is desperate for the church or churches today to walk in wholeness. To have unity. To focus on his divine love. To focus on holding each other up because we're part of one body. And to reach the lost souls of humanity that are in trouble. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they're going through. You can look at them and think, wow, they don't want nothing to do with me. You never know. Just open your mouth and say, God, here I am. Use me. Just being part of the body of Christ. Whoever's going to play the keyboard, come on. Uh, all of our keyboard. Look at somebody next to you and say to them, you are more important than you realize. Please forgive me. Um, you really got to forgive me after say this. This is one of the days. But some of you come in the church when I say you, I'm talking to you on Facebook and everybody else. 
Look like you've been sucking on lemons all morning. Face all puckered in and lips all twisted inside out. The fire of God is not in your eyes at all. Please forgive me. I look at some people in our church. When you walk away, I'm talking about you behind your back too. To God. Saying, Lord, they need help today. They're in bad shape. Well, you don't know what kind of morning I had. You don't know what kind of life I had. Well, my morning was really bad. I know. And if you're in the Bible days, they just killed your dad. And you still went to church. Sorry. We get so caught up in our little world of things going wrong. We got to get over that and say, God, I'm going to your house. I mean, you got to just stop sucking the lemons and say, God, you're my God. I'm going with a purpose. I'm going, Father God, as an ambassador of your kingdom. Now, I'm not trying to make light. Maybe you had a bad day. But get over it. Come on. Well, I'm having a rough time. I know everybody has. When you're 62, you've met plenty. When you're 80, you've met more. Life is hard. It's not easy. Especially in the last two years. It stinks every day. But that means you've got to rise up above the stench and walk in the kingdom and the wholeness of God. You rise up above the stench around you. Well, Pastor Dave, I'm in pain. I know some of the greatest evangelists have been in pain their whole lives. The one preacher's up there preaching and he had issues so bad that blood would run down his legs while he's preaching because of prostate issues. But he never let up. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He said, this is my place. And when I walk in my position, I have peace. Why were you born? Ask the person next to you, why were you born? I'm having fun with you today, but that's a real question. Now I want you to think about your life for a minute and ask yourself, what have I done with it? I'm not attacking anybody. I'm saying the devil has a plan of destruction. And you're either where you are today because the devil got you there, or you're where you are today because God got you there. But I've got news for you. If you're where you are today because the devil got you there, there's a God that's bigger than the devil that says, I'll take it from here. Did anybody get that? The lies, the deceit, the failures, the mistakes, the mess-ups. God is saying, I am yours. You are mine. I keep hearing this word in my mind, and I read a scripture the other day. I wish I could remember where it was. I wrote it down. But I've, I've been saying, God, I claim ownership of you. And he's claiming ownership of me. And we're one. I thank God for His mercy, His grace. What is your heart every day? Your purpose in the kingdom. You know what? You may be doing it. And if you are, stay at it. I'm not trying to get you to get up here and get a flag and some of you men put some white outfits on, do some backflips and dance around. I'm not asking anybody to do that. I'm just saying, secure yourself in God. Walk in the house. Spit out the lemons. Put on the smile. Well, Brother Dave, I have a hard time smiling. And ask God to help you. Get the joy of the Lord back. It becomes your strength. Ask Him to stir in your heart for lives to be touched. Ask Him to renew a right spirit within inside of you. Get your fire on. shouldn't ought to be what I'm about to say. You see, it shouldn't be that the church has to go to a conference somewhere to get on fire. Did you hear 
hear me? It shouldn't be that the church has to go to a conference to get on fire. Matter of fact, that time after they did the ramp for about nine months, the ramp up, Pastor Marcus took a whole load of youth to Brownsville to, to camp. Some of you remember, some of you don't because you weren't here when we talked about it. But you see, they would go there every year to get refired. I'm not against going places to get on fire. Don't, don't fully accept the way I'm saying it. We go get refueled. There's nothing wrong with that. We get stirred up. There's nothing wrong. But we should be on fire going there. Amen. Those young people prayed for nine months every Saturday. I think Melanie figured it out. It was about nine months. Nine months is the time for a baby to be born. I'll never forget this. If all the days of my ministry fade away, I'll never forget this one event. We're at Brownsville. It's the last night of the revival service for the kids, and they do a prayer tunnel. And after the prayer tunnel, some kids are falling out doing things, and they're getting ready, and the youth ministries are going home. There was a few thousand kids there at that time. And Sister Tammy and I were sitting over here. Tammy, you were there? Were you there? I don't know if you were there. But anyway, we were sitting over here on the side, and he came over, and he said, Marcus said, you got to come and see this. And I nonchalantly said, yeah, I see what's going on. Praise God. All of our kids are getting touched. But you got to come and see what's going on. But listen to me close. Those kids were on fire before they got there because they paid the price in prayer. They paid the price in sacrifice. They paid the price to overcome their weaknesses and their failures. I remember there was a pastor's son in town during one of those prayer meetings, took his cell phone outside and smashed it in the street. Came back in, in the prayer service and stood behind the pulpit and said, I had a problem with pornography, but I just got rid of it. That's what God was doing with them. That's what prepared them to go to that youth camp. I'll never forget this. I walk over there thinking what's going on and I look down it looked like a war zone down that aisle. 22 kids on their faces sitting, laying, crying, laughing, speaking in tongues. God baptized 21, I believe, children, teenagers in the Holy Ghost and fire on that aisle. All the rest of them were getting ready to go home and do their thing. But our kids... All of them got filled with the Holy Ghost. All of them were prophesied. They couldn't stop them. A fire ignited because they started finding their place in the body before they even went. Am I right, Marcus? Before they even went. And they're baptized in the Holy Spirit and they started praying. Every human being in that facility, and it was about eight times the size of this, every human being in there got prayed for. They swarmed, remember Karen, like flies. It was like, attack, there's somebody. And they just ran and they'd all prophesy and pray. Then they'd look, look, there's a staff member, get him. And they would run. I'm not exaggerating. And the staff would go outside and get the other staff and bring them in. And those kids ministered till one o'clock in the morning. Some of them, after they went to eat, couldn't even speak in English. I think Henry was three days, didn't know how to speak in English anymore. Oh, I want that as a regular. Do you understand? When we walk in that atmosphere, everything changes. This building won't house the people if we walk in that anointing that's available. And all we got to do is say, here I am, God. I want to be the part of the body that supplies strength to this part. And that part says, I want to be the part that supplies strength to that part. Do you realize that every part supplies strength to the other part? That's how it works. It's called unity. I don't know about you, but that was one of the greatest events of our ministry. And it wasn't because we prayed it up. It was because they positioned themselves. 
I'm going to ask you to stand your feet. How many believe the Bible is real? God wrote it. That book says believers will heal the sick. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. It says if they drink any deadly thing, it won't even harm them. That's a cool one. I don't want to try it. it said they'll cast out devils. They'll raise the dead. The miracles of God. Jesus said greater things will you do than I have done. I'm going to ask you in this place for 60 seconds or so. What I just described. And we've had some services. I'm going to tell you. We've had some services where we just stood here in awe. I got to tell you, one service is crazy. We had a special speaker here. Was, was that the one that Rick Curry was here when they were playing tag? Marcus? You weren't even, you weren't here. You saw or something. Was that, you were here at the time. You, I know you were here then, but one of you saw God move and you came, up, came over here. We were in my office praying and the power of God was just so thick. At one point, I, I might have stories mixed together, but it's all right. We couldn't get out of the office. We begin to hear noises and all sorts of stuff going on in here. Screaming and laughing and all sorts of stuff. And we finally get out of the office because the Spirit of God released us. And we open the door and we see these groups of people so filled with the Holy Ghost. We had nothing to do with it. The speaker couldn't even speak. We had teenagers, listen to me, chasing other teenagers just to lay hands on them and watch them fall out in the Spirit. I said they're playing tag with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Never saw nothing like that in my life. And I think Rick Curry, one of them said, did you know that in the Azusa Street Revival, they played, they played hide and go seek in the glory cloud? The kids did. Did you hear me? The presence of God, the cloud was so thick, the kids played hide and go seek. That's crazy. How would you like to walk in here and the power of God is so strong that the sick are getting healed, that demon possessed are getting set free. There's no such thing called an addiction because it's got to go. Souls are getting saved. The Holy Spirit is moving and many are speaking under the influence of the Holy Ghost. How would you like that service? Because that's my desire. I don't want to preach every service. I don't want to try to find something. I want the Holy Spirit to come and say, I have a word from this one and that one and this one. I want to see His glory clouds. You might say, Pastor David, I'm barely serving God. And you walk in and the Holy Ghost hits you. And you come up here weeping and say, i got to tell them what God says. And you, as a brand new Christian, just freshly delivered, are speaking the word of God. And you find your place and realize God wants to use me too. He's greater than addiction. He's greater than pornography. He's greater than abuse. He is God. And he can fix the mess that we've made. Paul said, I did not come with enticing words of man's wisdom. He said, I didn't speak all eloquently so you guys could get this stuff. He says, I come in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit so that your faith would not be in man but would be in God's. Church, are you ready? Because I'm starving. I don't just want a group of services. I want an encounter with God. i got to tell you one more and I'll stop. Tommy Tenney had a move of God in his church. And he went and picked up his atheist brother-in-law, or brother, one of the two. I think it was his brother-in-law. And they're driving him to his house, and he says, look, we remodeled the church. Do you want to come and see? And strangely, the brother-in-law said, yes. He said, he's never stepped foot in my church. Listen to me closely. I'm closing, but listen closely. He said, he's nervous. What's he going to think when he walks in the sanctuary? Listen, the atheist, unsaved, ungodly man walks from the vehicle, crosses the threshold of the church and is slain in the spirit and gets saved because he stepped in the atmosphere that God had been moving in. Do you understand the level of this God? Demons will shriek and leave in an instant. Blind eyes can be opened, deaf ears can be healed. Mental battles can be broken off. We live in a society where they're saying the mental disorders are on an all-time high. 
But I got a God that says I love God that I've given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Come on. He can fix the mental disorder. He can fix bipolarism. He can fix all these things. He can break the bondage of depression. He can fix the imbalance in your blood system. He's God. They brought the wheelchairs. They brought the beds. They brought the hospital beds into the services. And the ministers laid hands on them. And they're healed and delivered because that's the God we serve. And all I see is a world that needs that kind of Christians back. Come on, close your eyes. Father, we cry out to you. We say, here's our hands. Use them. We say, here's our mouth. Use it. Make us a part of a joint of your body that supplies power to somebody else. Use us, God. Tell us what to do, Father, for the windows of heaven to open. Lord, and I pray for the world and for the church, but I pray for world outreach. God, pour out your spirit, we pray. My God, let us come and wonder what is he going to do today. Oh, God. We humbly seek you. Lord, I pray for an empowerment for everyone in this building and everyone watching. That something will stir in their spirits. And that they will spend that time saying, here I am, God. Use me. Here I am, God. Send me. Here I am, God. I lay my life down. And my life is more concerned about supplying someone else's strength than my own. Someone else will supply my strength as I supply the strength of others. Oh God, use us as one body in unity. Give us the spirit of unity and the bond of peace. Strengthen us, oh God. We need the breakthrough. Lord, as our young people prepare this week, many adults are going. Blast them, God. And Father, when they come back into the house next Sunday, let there be a fire brewing that explodes in the house. That your name is glorified. But Father, fan the flames. with me if you can by faith Jesus I believe you will use me you will empower me that I will be a child of God you called me to be in Jesus name Amen if you receive that come on give the Lord a hand of praise I apologize if I yell too much, but I'm very passionate about what I believe is God's truth. Read your bulletins. Love each other. Lord with them, we'll see you soon. God bless.